Hello Ratbags, it's Jade. Welcome to Grounded Update 0.10. This is the big one, the Shroom and Doom update that adds the ability to have pets. I'm going to take you through the ultimate guides, how to tame them, how to keep them happy and what kind of perks do they give you. Is there anything else you need to know and what future pets are we going to be able to tame? Make sure you're liking if you want more Grounded content and let's go with the ultimate guide to pets. So you're going to need to get yourself over to the Hayes Laboratory entrance. This has been closed off for a whole year, not been able to access it, but now it's open. It's here on the map location. Inside is quite a challenge and you're obviously going to need a gas mask or some way to mitigate the toxic atmosphere. You are also going to need to wear your weevil gas mask when you explore this laboratory as well as you still can take damage. In here you're going to find three Taze Tees and one of the brand new robots, the Arc R. Now they are seriously OP. The Taze Tees are usual, should be able to handle them no problem. A few swipes and just watching out for their kamikaze spin tack and you should be okay. Then you've got another two taste tees when you go around this corner and this is also where you find the Arc R. So you might want to try and kite these guys out, take care of them first. Then go ahead and try and take on this guy. Now be warned, his charge that he fires off is absolutely deadly. One hit of it will take half your health and it rebounds. So it hit the wall and hit me again and so pretty much one shot killed me. So I put it in god mode just to show you guys the rest of this and you can see you can do quite a bit of damage with a tier 2 axe which is what I'm hitting him with pretty much 4 hits and he's gone. So yeah try keeping him at range with a bow and arrow that's probably going to be your best way to defeat him. Now there's a little hole in here that you need to go in first because you're going to go ahead and get some Brathurst bombs. That's what's inside here on this little observation pod here as well as some delightful acorn bars. So head back out to the main corridor and you've got a doorway that leads to the underground. Be careful, don't rush out, chuck a bomb and you should be able to take care of the mutated weevils. There you go, they've all just literally exploded. The infected ones are pretty deadly and with four of them so close, if you're getting caught in that, you are definitely going to be brown bread. So once you've taken care of them and got the resources, you're then looking for a small pool of water. Again, you still need to wear your gas mask, so you're going to need absolutely your best other armors that you can. Probably Ladybird at this point to give you maximum health and anything else that's going to replen your health over time. Swim through and you've got another doorway. There's no baddies in this one, simply the Burgle Chip, which you need to unlock some of the crafting stations namely the grinder as well as the oven so that you can actually start making the slurry needed for the pets there's not much else other than some science points so you can skedaddle out of here back to burgle and you can go ahead and buy it with science points the construction pack that you need it's quite expensive and it seems a bit of a shame that you have to spend money on it but it is going to be 4,000 science points to unlock the oven and the grinder pack it also obviously unlocks all of the mushroom build pieces or the majority of them as well and so then you only need to spend some more science points if you want the crow pieces especially the roofs and the reason you need it is because you are going to be making your pet home and you need mushroom bricks for this so here it is guys just to show you what exactly you get the grinder the oven the mushroom slurries as well as the pet house now we've just got to go and find the components needed to craft our oven as well as the grinder and of course that pet house. You're going to need to go over to the far side of the pond to pick up the burning fake coal. The barbecue has moved over slightly, you can see it's turned over and there are some actual pieces on top of the flagstone. So if you want to make more than one or two ovens, you can indeed make four ovens so far. And I'm not 200% sure whether or not they respawn but I'm guessing they do over a period of time. They stick out really, really a lot as they're burning and got smoke and you'll find a couple more pieces in the grass directly below. Be warned, things have changed though. You'll find plenty of stink bugs in this area as well. So you've got to look out for that. Go back and then start thinking about crafting your mushrooms. But first we need to make the slurry, which you're going to be using the grinder for. Two feather pieces, two acorn shells, three rose petals and five bombardier parts. You'll get between two and six pieces of crow feather every time you harvest one now, much more than you used to get. So you can actually grind up all of the green items, i.e. you've got fiber, you've got the stems, and you can put clover pieces. The stems and the clover pieces will grind into fiber, and then the fiber is what grinds into the green slurry. It takes a minute for it to get one piece of slurry. You can see you can only put four pieces at a time, and you can only get four pieces at a time. 
If you leave just the stems in there, they will only convert into fiber, and then it takes another minute to convert the fiber into the green slurry. So green slurry is needed for your aphids and mushroom slurry is needed for your weevils. You can put any type of mushroom inside and it will give you some. You'll get six pieces of mushroom slurry for one brown piece of mushroom. You'll get two pieces of mushroom slurry for one simple mushroom stalk. But the best version to get is the toadstools. These are going to give you 10 pieces of mushroom slurry per piece. Just a little FYI that the mushrooms you find in the haze zone, they don't give you any additional pieces. They're treated exactly like the brown mushrooms, so you still only get six pieces. So at the moment, weevils don't generally give you too much in terms of bonuses. There's only a small perk, which you're going to go through. But obviously aphids, they can get you aphid nectar if you keep them in the right place. So it's probably more important to make sure you've got the aphids up and running first and then maybe go and get yourself a weevil. But you won't need loads of mushrooms for that. You're going to be definitely using your mushrooms for your castle bill pieces. You're going to need 10 pieces of clay, one of them charcoal chunks and four boiling glands for to you to craft the actual oven. So of course you'll get two pieces of mushroom brick for every five slurry that you put in and these are obviously what you need to build your pet house. Again it takes approximately one minute to create these mushroom bricks and this is the key part. If you want the costumes for your little creatures you can get cosmetic items including two helmets at the moment. You do need to go and analyse one of the bricks and so make sure you do that first. Doing so should unlock the pet ant helmet and the pet grub goggles. Now these are just cosmetic items but they're actually really good for pointing out which creatures are yours against wild ones. So make sure you get some of the grub hide, the ant head as well as some mite fur to make the ant helmet. You can switch them both as well so both of your pets, the weevil and the avids can wear either one of the helmets. Okay let's start actually taming our creatures. Pretty much just drop the bowls of slurry on the floor. Now it does help with weevils that you can pretty much just tame them no matter where they are but aphids they get a little bit scared. They will pretty much run around if you're too close. So you kind of have to back off quite a bit, wait for them to go ahead and eat it and it sometimes takes more than one bowl. In fact it can take up to six or seven bowls I've found in some instances. So there are a few things to point out. If there's a couple of aphids trying to eat from the same bowl that sometimes interrupts the taming process and likewise with weevils so try and just make sure only one weevil or one aphid at a time is eating from the bowl once they're done you'll get a notification that says they're now a pet and you can go ahead and pet them so yeah you might have to drop quite a few bowls in an area it could be worth trying to build a pen but I do find that they kind of just try and get away from you if they're too close. Once you've got your pet house built, you can then go ahead and rename your creatures. And this is where you can also equip them with different cosmetic items. You'll need two weed stems, one piece of acorn shell, four mushroom bricks and two crow feathers to build the pet house. So once you've tamed a pet, go ahead and click on the house and it will give you the options to deposit that pet inside that home. Although it doesn't actually stay inside the home, it will just hover around the area. Now you can have hundreds of pets, but you can only have one active pet at a time. And the active pet pretty much means it gives you a perk. You'll get a perk for the aphids as well as the weevils, but like I said, you can only have one active at any one time. There is no breeding in it at the moment and the pets will not follow you. You're meant to get them and leave them pretty much somewhere safe and secure. A few things to note, they will steal from your chests. If you've got food inside and you've not left enough out for them, they will start rummaging around. I caught a aphid rummaging around with the little mast rubber sign on. The weevils will also run around hoovering up any food that's left on the floor. So you're best off leaving a bunch of slurry in a chest and if you see any disappearing, now you know why. So at the moment, it doesn't look like the personalities really mean that much, but supposedly there's going to be over 100 different types for all the pets once they're implemented. I do think in the future, it might mean that some pets will kind of stick close to their bases more and others may move around a little bit. They will hover around the little pet house. So wherever you build it or put it, that's where your pet is going to roam around. A few things to note as well. Your aphid will give you some obviously aphid nectar, but you need to be on dirt to get it. I found that I wasn't getting any aphid nectar when I was on these stones but as soon as I moved my pet house over to some dirt and so near some grass the aphids start producing for me. The aphid perk pretty much gives you a small stamina speed sprint boost 
so you won't use as much stamina when you're sprinting if you've got the aphid friend pet perk included and the weevil perk actually helps with your first you won't get as thirsty when you've got the weevil friend perk equipped so the big news is that there are going to be other creatures we kind of knew this we felt like it would be ants that would maybe come next but it does look like that actually it's going to be gnats Helios from the Grounded Discord modding community pretty much had this from the files so it does look like gnats are going to be one of the next pets that we will be able to keep. I'm hoping we'll be able to harvest fluff off of them without actually killing them or something, something pretty useful. Their perk, when you do get it, will give you the ability to glide a little bit longer. But obviously that's not going to be in the game just yet, it may be a few weeks or a few months before that's implemented. As of recording this, literally on the day that the update goes live from the PTS server for everyone to enjoy it. So maybe not, maybe they've included it as a full release thing. Obviously, if you see that's around and you can actually tame them, well now you know what the perk is for them. Petting them doesn't seem to do too much and they will reheal themselves if they take damage. They've only got a small health pool and you can damage them yourself with your weapons. So it's best to be careful with them. But if you leave them alone for a while, they will just replenish their health. I tried to see if I petted them, maybe that would make it a bit quicker. Or if they would eat, that would replenish their health more. And it looks like none of them things really make a difference. You will need to protect your aphids from weevils and you will need to protect the weevils from ants. So at the moment it does look like it's definitely better off getting a whole farm worth of aphids, especially on a dirt farm that's secure so that it can carry on producing nectar for you. Whereas the weevils, you might only need one or two of the actual pets themselves. And again, only if you want that reduction in first perk. Now what happens when your pets die? Well, I'm going to show you. Say goodbye my poor W1 weevil. Uh, once he loses all his health, you can see you can harvest these remains. Hold the X button on him and you will get a stone tombstone that you can place and put wherever you want. Now I wasn't able to actually craft these but it did give me the blueprint. Seems like a bit of a bug at the moment where you can pick one up and place infinite amount of them. There's two different tombstones, one for the weevils and one for the aphids. The aphids has got a small little statue of an aphid on top of it as well with both tombstones saying rest in peace doesn't look like these do anything you're not going to be warning off any other creatures other than maybe if they had some sense they'd not want to be your pet but there we go that's the weevil and the aphid tombstones as always i'll be the first to let you know about brand new stuff coming to grounded check out my let's play i'm revisiting grounded in a big way and i'll see you rat bags for more very soon